The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. This basher business, robbery with violence, has got the Grey Goose into bad repute, using my feathers as the basher does. So I start to track him down. I visited a sort of thieves' kitchen with little Charlie Austin to see if there was a likely suspect. I even bragged a bit and said, in very mixed company, I was a basher. No one batted an eyebrow, so I called it a day. On the way home, Charlie and I got bashed ourselves. Later, we woke up, and then I discovered my basher, Sam Burnett. He and his stooge took Charlie into an inner room and tortured him to make him open up. But the stout fella didn't. And very soon I was able to free myself and take a hand. We beat Sam Burnett up, and not knowing what to do with him and his pal, I left Charlie on guard and went to collect my car with a view to carting him to Charlie's place. Imagine my surprise when I got back to Latimer Street and found no Charlie, no bods of Sam Burnett and co. What the deuce? Those two thugs must have bested Charlie after all, got away and taken him with them. Now... Where do I go from here? Maybe his own place in Arcot Street. Well, nothing for it. I'll try there first. Take the car as near as I dare and ring Barbara to meet me there. Hello there. Rolish. Good girl. Glad you're on time. Fact is, I don't exactly know what to do. It all depends on circumstances. What's happened? I'll give it as short as I can. I went to a dive with Charlie Austin. Why? To find a certain basher. Instead of which, he and the pal found me and Charlie. And Charlie and I eventually had a bit of an argument with them in which Basher and Pal got hurt. I went to get my car to take them for a cooling process in Charlie's cellar. I got back. No Charlie. No Basher and Pal. They must have overcome Charlie somehow. <laughs> Too true. I've a hunch they've forced Charlie to bring them here to his own place. That will be fine. Exactly. So somehow I've got to explore Charlie's place this minute. Now stand by. I'm going to get myself inside in the hopes that they are there. You're going to stick your neck out. How very true. Look, if by any chance things do go wrong, I'll find a chance somehow to yell, Barbara. Yes? That's your cue to dash off, collect Inspector Ford, and bring him here. But that'll put him on your track. Maybe, but I'll find an answer for that one, if it so turns out. Now stand by, partner. Be seeing you later. Lucky guess. They are here. Oh, I tell you, I did it. Putting Charlie through it again. Stick it, Charlie. Somehow I'll get you out of this. That fellow's a copper's knock, and you took him down to the cup, didn't you? Speak, you little squealer. No, he's not, I tell you. He's just a bit of a top who wanted to see a bit of underground stuff. Ask myself, so I took it. How do you know so much about Lyndon Hall and the Caddick Hotel? He even said he'd done those jobs himself. Uh, Come uh, on, man, spill it. Or how do you like this? Come on, James. Do me a little persuader twist. Uh, uh, Seller, that's it. Uh, well, here goes. Police whistle again, I think. <laughs> Hope they won't notice that I'm only one. Uh. Now, off we go. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Sam, James, Austin, this is a cop. Come along quietly. Righto, fellows, just guard the back windows and door. I'll watch these gentlemen. Come on, now, come on. Release that man, Burnett. Who are you? Police, and don't be impertinent. Get a move on, release that man. You all right, Austin? Uh, just about. You know, Inspector, I ain't felt very cordial towards the London police in the past, but by crocky, you and your mob are, if I might say so. Very welcome to my humble abode on this occasion. <laughs> I can't say more. And don't try it, now. Shut up, Burnett. 
We are only out on parole, you know, and I find you in very strange company already. Copley, get that wagon around to the front door. We have a couple, um, three birds to deliver. And hurry. Now, Austin, where do you come into this? Oh, honest, Inspector, I, I ain't done a thing. Oh, is that so? Then why were Sam Burnett and his lovely pal J. James putting the pressure on you? So help me, I know nothing. Uh, something about a place called Linden Hall and the Carrick Hotel. I see. Or I think I'm beginning to see. Burnett, you! What do you know about Linden Hall, Carrick Hotel, and two other places where people were bashed unmercifully and then were robbed? Exactly nothing. Oh, you weren't even there, were you? No, of course not. But strangely, you stupidly left an important clue in each place. Uh, uh, oh! Quietly, Inspector. Oh, oh, I ain't that fella, so help me. Oh, I ain't the grey goose. Oh, I never left no feathers. Oh, dear, oh, dear, Sam. Didn't you jump in that time with both feet? Who said anything about a feather or a grey goose? Oh, you idiot. Well, talking of geese, yours is about cooked, Sam. And when that squad car arrives, you'll be taking another ride which will finish you this time for ten years at least. Now, get over in that corner. You, James, too. Uh, I tell you... Shut up. James, your hand. You, Sam Burnett, yours. Behind you. That's it. There. Handcuffs will just do for both of you. Put your hand through this mangle wheel, James. No, no, no. Now you, Burnett. No, no, the other way. That's it. You are one side of Charlie Austin's mangle, Sam, and James is on the other. <laughs> and if you start anything, you'll have to drag the mangle around with you. Blimey, inspector or no inspector, I'll get you for this. Nonsense, Sam. In ten years, I'd have grown a white beard and you'll not even recognise me. Now, you, Austin, you'll come down to headquarters with these others. And I'll want the truth, see? Uh, yes, sir, uh, inspector. All right, just start walking to the front door. My man up there will look after you. And remember, I'm not a bit satisfied about you. Incidentally, I'm coming up too, and just behind you, so no funny tricks. Uh, uh, okay, Inspector. Watch this one, Copley. Scully, Charlie, and wait for me in the street. All right, you rats. I advise you to stay there for a few minutes, and don't try wrestling with that mangle. It weighs two or three hundred weight. Yes, you may even have a long wait. So seeing that you may be thirsty, here's a glass of water for each of you. And Sam... A piece of chewing gum for you. I got me own, Chewy. Hey, listen, this ain't regular. Not on the up and up. Definitely not, Sam. And you'll be surprised how very irregular it all is. <laughs> now stay quiet till I find if the wagon's arrived. They bested me, Mr. X. But how? I left them in your care tied up. Oh, no, sir. But we left him too near the lamp, see? And that sort of melted that sticky stuff on the tapes and gradually James must have slid his off. Next thing I knew, he jumped me, knocked me cold, and then I suppose he released Sam Burnett. Well, we can't leave those birds forever chained up to your old mangle. After all, it's your place. My place? Crocky, Mr. Hicks. I'll never be able to go back there again. <laughs> Not just yet, certainly. But once we get Brother Sam and Maestro James out of the way, you'll be able to reopen for business as usual. At any rate, you'll come back to my place for the rest of the night. <laughs> By crocky, Mr. X. They swallowed that their inspector act of yours all right. <laughs> of course they did. They had what is called guilty consciences. And a guilty conscience, as Confucius says, is like an alligator. It will swallow anything. <laughs> Aha! There's a lady hailing us. A lady? Crops. Sounded like a motor horn to me. <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> I've seen more of you. You're by way of being a great humorist. To be precise, Miss Favisham is in a car just up the street and is becoming impatient. So, hence my stalwart. Well, so here you are. I was just beginning to get, to get impatient and commence Operation Barbara. But of course I waited. Well, as fortune has it, let there be no panic. You remember my little friend, Charlie Austin? Of course I do. How are you? Oh, fine, miss. And uh, thanking you for the quine and curry. Well, what's on the programme now? Bed, I hope. No, a motor drive. Do you mind? Yes, very much. But I don't think that matters. Where's your own car? A couple of blocks away. I don't want to use it. But first, we go to the flat. And I'm going to have a word or two with Ben Ford. Step on it, driver. <clears throat> now, look, Fletcher. I've practically sacrificed the 60% life expectation by dragging myself out of bed to call round here at the crack of dawn. <laughs> 
And you haven't yet convinced me that I'd not be better off where I was. Well, now you know Charlie Austin. Yes, I've said that, and I know he's an old lag. <laughs> All forgiven and forgotten, Inspector, I hope. Forgiven, but not forgotten. Oh. Now then, what's all this beating about the bush? I have decided to go in for crime. <laughs> Personally, and knowing you so intimately, I think it will suit you. Oh. <laughs> all right, now, jokes aside, what's on? Well, I'm on your side about this goose feather addict. The grey goose, you mean? That's the chappie. And I believe he's no basher, murderer and all that. I'm certain of it. But he's still a criminal. And a candidate for life membership of Wormwood Scrubs. By Jove, sounds terrible. Well, uh, let me proceed. Take the Linden Hall case. Caretaker bashed, safe opened, silver disappeared. Yes, that's not news. Now, my life of crime, which I just mentioned to you, runs to my mind in this fashion. I'd like to find the basher of Linden Hall. The grey goose, everybody says. Ah, ah, but we don't agree with everybody. Now, I wish to enter Linden Hall, but being a mere nobody, access is denied me. Well, naturally. Place is under supervision by the local confederate. Who wouldn't recognise a bar of soap before they'd notice me. Eh? <laughs> Upside down way of putting it, but that's the idea. Thus, I want you to escort, sponsor, vouch for, and what have you, myself and Charlie Austin, and get us admitted into the aforesaid Linton Hall. <laughs> You think you can do more than the police? No, 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 no. But I think I know more than the police. The fact is, Ben, I'm a lock and safe expert, as you know. All I know, too, was taught me by Charlie Austin here. <laughs> That's so. And the success of the firm of Fletcher & Co. is due to that little knack I've developed. Well, what does all that mean? Charlie and Austin and I want to see that safe and a few other things. Now, come on, get interested, for goodness sake. All right, all right, I'm interested. But I'll guarantee you can't do a thing the police haven't done. <laughs> Don't be rash, Ben. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll prove to your satisfaction that the grey goose didn't bash that caretaker, and better still, I'll make you a present of the man who did. A dangerous challenge, Inspector Ford probably thinks, but we know better, because the next episode will prove the points made by the grey goose. 